if Fav Gaming can create the chaos, that is where they will succeed. And I think that Oregon is a very strong map for Aerowolf. So if it goes to the third map, which will be Bank as our decider, Fav Gaming will have it. If Aerowolf can close it out in two maps, I think they'll have. I think, I think take if it. we do get to bank, it is going to be let loose and chaotic. Now, when I was chatting to Glenn Luna Metal, uh, the captain of Aero Wolf, before this matchup, he said he's he's comfortable with the maps. He's very happy. So, time to get stuck straight on into it. Map number one of Clubhouse is the first game of the Six Invitational 2019 APAC qualifier: Fav Gaming versus Aero Wolf. We are, and these bands coming out quick and fast. That is a Blitz ban coming out of Aero Wolf. Interesting. Aerowolf have been a team that typically does embrace the shields, but typically they go on Montaigne. So we'll see whether Fav are going to counter that. No, in fact, they're countering the Ying. So Aerowolf love their Ying. They love their Montaigne. There, there's a lot of operators that, um, you know, sometimes you have like a really good player on a specific operator and you counter ban that. And I really think that that's what we're seeing coming out of Fav for that Ying target ban. Yeah, well, the Blitz is also quite a target ban against Fav. You know, they're a very aggressive team. They're a very fast team. So I think that's a great ban out of Aerowolf. Mira, though, coming out from Fav as well. So that's a very stock standard ban here. Um, what do you reckon the chances of an Echo ban coming out? Uh, I mean, typically, uh, Aerowolf... Oh, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's possible. Let's see. I feel like Maestro is the best operator, but no, it's it's Echo. Well, you're a prophet today, Flea. <laughs> But, yeah, so as we go, very stock standard defense bans here. And uh, we'll have to see exactly how this map will play out. Clubhouse map number one. Finally first getting into the round number one. Fav Gaming taking the attack. Aerowolf chose the defense. Yeah, and of course it is um, It is the map pick for Aerowolf. It's where they should be comfortable. And it looks like uh, Cash and CCTV is where they're going to be kicking it off. Maestro is still left... In the hands of Mentalist, one of the most powerful operators. And wow, okay, Glaz and Montaigne being brought out. This is a... Six a... pick from the Jackal. So I think that they know they're going to go CC Cash first. And they are definitely heading into that. If I remember correctly, it is actually Aerowolf uh, that did this strat first in APAC, where they walked up Attackers the stairs with the Monty. And, the and then they just they walked in, took over control of Garage, and just completely opened the map using that Monty. There wasn't really much that they could do about it, and they had to end up getting a late flank eventually. Uh, but it was an adaptation we saw that crushed them over yeah. like two to three maps. So Aerowolf now coming up against their own strategy. And uh, we'll have to see whether or not they are prepared for their own thing. Yeah, pushing your Montaigne through the garage stairs really can be incredibly effective. That said, there are some very simple counters to it. Just put a deployable shield there. We've got one deployable shield, not quite for the same purpose. But it is in the uh, in the garage at the top. We also have potentially some lesion mines from Yusera to be hard holding, um, alongside some reinforcements in the west walls on the exterior of garage and some angles towards the, uh, the lounge. So, I like this very heavy investment by, by Aerowolf. Yeah, and we can see there the wall open into uh, lounge from the garage. So someone definitely going to be holding that spot there. Um, could be Maestro with his ACOG, but I think it's probably also uh, going to probably be Hysterics on that boot. Uh, mute. Even Luna Metal could hold it off with a smoke grenade if they really wanted to. And just like you had predicted, that Montaigne looking to get nice and quickly into the garage, of course, with uh, with Yusera on the scaffolding, ready to uh, throw any goo mines towards Taipon as needed as they slowly and gradually regenerate in his pocket. Also with these two impact grenades, should the Montaigne get too close, Ysera will have the ability to deal some level of damage. Some of the static goo mines already taken out as one minute subsides. And the Thermite in conjunction with the mice, uh, sorry, the uh, Maverick is looking to open up this wall, but still Muted. a mute jammer is preventing the final pop of that Thermite charge. Yeah, so they can't quite get their attacks open just yet. Where it is going to be Shin using the uh, lethal Citizen Glaz skin. So that elite skin coming out here. Very nice skin in my opinion, but let's see how it goes. Here comes the Zofia charges. They haven't quite stunned Usera just yet, but Taipon has made his way up to the top. Taipon now with that Goomine there can't press any further because he can't lower his shields. He has to wait for support to come and take out 
that goon mines. Ooh. Here comes the smoke, babes. It goes straight past Taipon. Nothing coming out of it. Shin still repelled on this ledge. He doesn't quite see him. There we go. Gets the tag up onto Lunar Metal. Yuseri gets tagged up as well as he has to run away. Shin gets the first kill of the whole weekend as he drops. Lunar Metal finally gets put down. And Yuseri now stuck between a rock and a hard place. No pressure from the west window. Just allows Yuseri and Mentalist to get aggressive and take down Shin. But Taipon with a quick refrag. Frag's going all the way of Aerowolf. Now only two remaining for Fav Gaming. The Monty eliminated. Odin Misa looking to push in from the Thermite Breach. A stun grenade assists him in his push. Heading to the right, and he just a sprint. Right into hysterics, though. He has something to say about that. Afro trying to get the frag through the wall. Doesn't really find anything, though. Afro, the last one left. He gets the pre-fire, downs him. Doesn't get the finalized kill, oh! though. Oh, what a flick. He manages to land it onto Array. Hysterics gets dropped as well. Now a one versus one. Afro versus Mentalist. Maverick versus Maestro. If there was any time for Mentalist to prove his worth on this team, it would be right now in the first match. The first round of the first match. The intel is in Mentalist's favor. Tags up a couple of points onto Afro. He has to get aggressive. He doesn't have defuser. The pre-fire comes out, but Mentalist stops firing, and Afro gets the frag. Fav Gaming picking up their first round. With such a defensive side of meta, things are looking grim for Aerowolf. The fact that we saw Afro clutch in, in a one versus three does not bode well, and I've got to be feeling like <sighs> that's just not the kind of... It's, it's the kind of thing that puts a, a dampener on the entire team spirit, losing from such an advantageous position. Yeah, that was a great one versus three from Afro there. Certainly uh, clutch back that round. And we'll have to see how they go again. Still going back to CC Cash. And uh, I think Fav going to be running the same strategy, but they showed the Montang this time. This time, Six picking the Glaz to the Jackal. Um, uh, Jackal, very good. Oh, okay. Ooh, nope. No, Thatcher. Thatcher. All right. So they they struggled really hard getting open that mute jammer, and I think I actually thought that was going to be cost them the round. Right? I thought that was going to cost them the round. How long it took them to get rid of that mute jammer? Taking a Attack Thatcher this time, they're not playing games. Off. They're just going to get rid of that mute jammer and open that wall. So I'm fairly certain the mute jammer was located right where Hysterix is placing it now, on the east side, just next to that little drone hole near the thermite wall and as such it doesn't actually prevent the thermite charges from being uh placed on the kind of more south side on the left side if you will of the wall but it does prevent on the right i'm really surprised that we didn't have any pressure on the west window for fav gaming because we were had mentalist and luna both allowed to play aggressively inside of the cctv room without being pressured at all and well, maybe just a simple adaptation from Fav would make that part of their uh, of their push that much easier. Yeah. Ooh, so pre-play smoker, babe. Did you see that by Lunar Metal inside yeah. of the garage? They're waiting for that Monty to come up this time. Yasera is going to tell him when to pop it, and we'll have to see wow. whether or not Fav Gaming catches onto that, and Taipon will be able to get rid of it. I really, really like that. Great play from Luna. Let's have a look and see through this round whether it works out quick as you like. Taipon, sorry, Odin Miso, attempting to open up this east-facing wall so far. Here comes the Thatcher. There you go. And he's going to be able to pop a look at that so much faster. They get it done sub one minute, which is a lot faster than what they got it done last round. So already this round's looking better. Ooh. But Array has something to say about that. Wow. You can get our wall open, but I'll take K-Razor off the board as they're going to drop that Zofia. A lot of soft-breaching utility that would be uh, used for destroying those Maestro devices and wasting ADSs as well as exposing defender positions. That's all gone, just from a nice run out from Strip. Uh, yes. Still, Ysera allowed to play at the top of Garage. However, the Monty just droning out at the moment. You can see Taipon, the Maestro device, trying to deal with that drone, but so far, no luck. It's only hitting those... Uh, get Finally gets hit by the Mute Jammer, but hitting those railings time oh. and time again. And railings really are the bane of uh, a lot of people's existence in this game. Can't tell you how many times I personally have shot railings time and time again. But there's the trap getting popped. Wow. Typon takes a ton of damage and he oh gets taken my out. God. The impact nade from Ysera. And that is how Aerowolf deals with their own strategy. What a beautiful play from Aerowolf. It's just the stars aligning. One small trick of a gas bay pre placed, one small trick there. Worked out so well for them, but Shin does do some work and finally Ooh. take out the player in Garage. Yeah, they finally managed to take out Ysera. Shin using that, repping that Fnatic skin. Ooh. Afro, though, going to get himself another frag as he takes out a Ray and Eru for starting to fall one at a time. 
but these an little annoyances left over from Arrowwolf's defense, those goo mines are coming into play right now. Shin Finally. off the glass now on the Thatcher instead. Time to drone out the situation. Still a lot of time, but nothing to deal with that Meister device unless the Maverick can get close and blowtorch it away. Looks like that's yep. what's going to happen. Easy as you like. There you go. Looking like a pretty good position for Fav. Yeah, they're starting to get into it, but with 40 seconds left now, the clock is going to start really becoming their enemy. The Thatcher nade's going to come out. It is actually going to stop the Maestro device. That gas babe goes off. It didn't, of course, get to where they wanted it. The plant gets started now. Odin is the one doing it. A nice shot from Afro. Hits Luna's head, removes that, but Mentalist is going to trade him straight back. And now it all becomes about denying that oh! plant. Odin Misto, what a shot. A double kill for him. Puts it into Fab's hands again. 2-0 up now. My gosh, just look at the gun skill here. Those quick peeks and then a second one for Odin me. So Thermite, more like Fragmite. And it really is is telling of something that I was heard from uh, from Luna Metal before the match started. I was talking to, to Luna from Airwolf and he said, look, we know this is going to be a challenge. We know that Fav are unpredictable. They've got Shin. Shin is a mastermind of being unpredictable. However, we think that if it comes down to pure gunfights, we will win. And that's not what we're seeing so far with two rounds in a row, multi-kills to finish it off for Fav Gaming. Yeah, Afro and uh, I believe that was Odin Miso putting the team on their back when they need it most, but still hiding this Jackal, going for the roam clear, but still carrying this Monty. They're going to have to really, uh, in my opinion, this Monty's going to have to push down Dirt Tunnel. Uh, maybe potentially down blue, maybe down oil pit. I, f I get the feeling we're going to see a lot of Monty this weekend. I just know that... I mean, we've seen Augus bring it out in the past. Mantis, love them, Montaigne and, and Arable for the, with the team here that really popularized started, it, popularized yeah. it, yes. Yeah. So, and now that we're seeing Fav have it, I feel like we're going to see a, a Montaigne heavy weekend. <laughs> well, it could be a possibility. It's not something you see an awful lot because, of course, you know, he does lose that kill pressure. Um, he does bring, a, he does bring you know, a fair bit in with that shield, that way to just walk a team safely through a narrow passage. But... He also loses a lot of kill pressure, which yeah. is very important in these high-level games. And what we're seeing more so these days in the global meta is really spearheading specific players to emphasize that fragging ability. We saw it with Nesk in the past. Kanto's done it to somewhat, maybe not so much recently, but then uh, just today in the EU Pro League joystick from Team Empire has been a player to really demonstrate the power of, of uh, just having a dedicated fragger. So interesting to see the, the contrast in the meta between regions and what Fav Gaming is, is is bringing out so much that's working so well. Yeah, well, we could also touch on, you know, the differences between the sub-regions themselves and their metas. And, ooh, Array just having a little bit of a peek. He, he knows someone's there, I think, mm. and... Uh, Dangerous roam on Clubhouse. You know, historically, Afro, not, not something that happens. Though. So, yep, they're going to back back down. That was a... Uh, Fairly uh, exposed spot for Array, but Luna's still upstairs. Odin is going to get the first kill, removes the head of Mentalist, makes that roll, and Mentalist is going to have to sit the rest of this round on the cameras. Luna still on the roam, however. Very aggressive round so far from Arrowwolf. They're relying on these individual gunfights, which so far have, have been winning. So I'm a bit worried for Arrowwolf, and... That's it. It is taking quite a long time for this roam clear to happen. Oh. Ysera spots out the drone, but can he take down the player? No. The Jackal on the other side does take a lot of damage, and Luna potentially coming to assist. His Goomine's now going to be a thorn, quite literally, in the side of Shin as he tries to progress through the logistics office. Yeah, Shin hits another couple of those Goomines. He's downed. And, uh, but no, Ysera comes up Ooh. for support, and they both managed to get back. Sorry, Ray came up for support, and they both managed to get back down. And uh, now with a four-man stack in the basement, Shin going to scan some footsteps, finds out they are in the basement. Not much to come from that. Afro hits another goo mine. These goo mines are just being an absolute thorn in the side of Fab at the moment. Smart move from Airwolf to retreat back to the bomb side, but with so much time left, how much is it actually going to make a difference? Yep, and here we go. Afro going to start trying to take out these hatches. Bomb Does take, of course, a while to take out hatches as a Maverick. And, or Ysera trying to see if he can find a sneaky head. Throws a goo mine. I do believe he got droned out, though. Okay, Razor taking care of some barbed wire. And this attack strategy with 30 seconds left needs to start developing. 
They need to start working out how they're going to push forward. Getting a lot of yeah, intel at the, the bottom of the main stairs. Taipon throws out a smoke grenade to protect himself from the long angle, but starts to push on forward. More smokes coming out from the Jackal now. The Aerowolf poised to receive the file in from Fav Gaming. Still no linchpin, no head for Fav Gaming. Where's the push coming from? There you have it, the Montane, but the C4 oh, comes over the top and oh. two kills with the C4, the Montane. Oh my God, Array and Ysera to finish it off. The first defensive win for Aerowolf. Array comes up huge with that C4. They just stack the door and Array makes them pay for it with their lives. One explosion was all it needed to rip that attack apart. Fav Gaming, they just took a little too long in my opinion. They really, to me, it was just the fact that they didn't have anything to dislodge the players inside of Church. They were relying on this Montane to just brute force the issue, but that's not doing the job. They spot out the Montane and they shoot the players behind the Montane. I, I, I'm a bit worried for uh, for the Fav gaming attack on that one. It looks like when Fav have a clear idea of what they want to do, how they want to push, as they did when they were attacking Cash Room, you know, they know how to take Garage, they know how to clutch these situations and force a plant down. But when it comes to just breaking that egg that is Church, it's certainly difficult. Yeah, I don't know if they wanted the Monty for that basement attack, but going to the gym and bedroom this time, Aerof choosing the tertiary bomb site over their failed primary bomb site. So it doesn't look like they're ready to go back to cash just yet. Uh, I don't think they really have an answer for Fab's push or really for Fab's individual play on that uh, on that site. That's the thing, right? Like we saw the Monty be neutralized inside of Garage and we saw essentially Aerowolf won the Garage hold. But then after all that had happened, Ysera holding inside of Garage just got taken out from, a, from elsewhere. And that meant that Fav Gaming pushed in and took as normal. So even when Aerowolf hard counter the main push from Fav, Fav always have some kind of reply. It's one of those things, like how do you, like what do you do? Because they lost, Aerowolf lost those first two rounds purely because of individual plays out of Fav Gaming methods, right? Like uh, Afro on the first one and Odin Miso on the second one. Like uh, you can put it down to, it was a 1v3 and a 1v2. Like I, I don't think that like, Aerowolf should have won those, and they didn't. So I think that Aerowolf just don't seem confident on that map, maybe, or maybe they don't feel confident on the retake. Once again, the Maverick being used to enable here. some Thermite charges. Using a lot of fuel here. Yeah. Afro struggling. There we go. That was a lot better than the first one. I really don't know what set off that first one, um, but just not really getting it. Ooh, look at that. The Mute Jammer. Oh my goodness, can this Mute Jammer counter no. the walls? It can Surely get, not. Sure, it, this Mute Jammer can reach about the halfway point of both the walls, but the side flanks are still both exposed, so Thermite will be able to pop either side of those walls. That's clever stuff from Aero, but I don't know if it'll work for them. Aero will know how Fav Gaming play this. They know that only occasionally do they bring the Thatcher and instead prefer the Maverick. Maverick, when it opens up all those holes below, can see any Mujama simply placed on the wall, but uh, unfortunately for Aerowolf, their strategy doesn't seem to pan out for them this round as the wall yeah, completely so if, open. There we go, yeah. So as you can see, it has to be the extreme flank that they have to blow it on. That Mujama didn't quite cover enough, uh, but it can still get the wall open, but it can't get the wall open to the extent that they wanted, I think. I think that's the, the point. Like, you know they're going to get the wall open anyway, so let's give them an angle they're not happy with. It's a great point. Perhaps Aerowolf can win these angles then. Mental inside of the office, he realizes he's trapped due to that logistic hatch where we might see a Monty drop down and start pushing through shortly. Hopefully by that time, Mental's made himself a rotation out of there using the Bailiff. Yeah, and you can see that Evil Eye there ready to go for it. That Valcam, unfortunately, not going to be able to see a lot through those leaves. Could probably still scan through them, but they can't see an awful lot. K-Razor on the windows outside of Bedroom. Wow. Um, that Valk Cam, I don't quite think he's getting the info he wants out of it. But here come the smoke grenades, and the drop has happened. The flank is not covered. Oh, no, the mental. Monty manages to pick up. No, he didn't. Odin Miso gets it. He gets himself a second one. That's Mentalist and Hysterics getting dropped. And Fav Gaming getting very, very aggressive. Type 1 playing so aggressively on that Monty. And then Monty's working out for them. All the intel being gained, just walking through the smoke. Oh, what a peek from Ysera. Ysera and Luna together take that player down. Ysera now. 
being felled, but Luna's in such a terrible position, but a raise in the best one he possibly can finds one before being traded out, all up to the captain of Airwolf, and the Monty will finish him off. Fav Gaming go up three to one. Yeah, and that defense out of Airwolf just did not pan out. They had all the angles they needed, but they were just all looking the wrong way at the wrong time. Fav Gaming picked up two players in the back before they could even react to it. It was just, I think Fav just took advantage of a time window that they had. Oh yeah, big oversight on, on, on allowing the drop into logistic office. No lesion was picked that round, so you know, no no lesion mine being placed there, which would have made so much of a difference. And perhaps Airwolf need to be, be really vigilant and keep picking that vig uh, sorry lesion, um, just to ensure that, that that Monty has always got something in his path to prevent him from simply wadding on through. Six pick, glass to glass. <laughs> I feel like every time I see that, I feel like it's the player who's doing it just saying, all right, no one else is six-picking. This is the strat. I'm not sure whether Shin's doing that or whether he's just having a bit of fun messing with me. Uh, this is indeed the strat. And uh, as we're going to go on, they're back to CC and Cash Room. We'll have to see whether or not Aerowolf. I feel like Aerowolf, they've they've started this round. Oh, look at that. Odin, Miso, and Afro. Six kills apiece. Hard breach showing to be the primary fraggers so far. I quite like it. I mean, Maverick in particular is really strong. I really like Maverick's well, I mean, gun. It's not, hard, you know, it's no R4C, but it's certainly good. Your hard breach, if they do their job, they can play as aggressively as they want. And the 5.56 five, five, is an absolute weapon. Like, it is so good of a rifle. Five seconds to insertion. Well, Airwolf, last time they defended this site, they had a great hold of Garage before finally Ysero was taken out. Perhaps we need to see a second player inside of the Garage. I wouldn't mind seeing Mental just, or even anyone. Hey, it could be Hysterics or Array. Just chill out inside of the Garage with Ysero at the top so that if he does get pushed, there's someone there for the refrag. Odomiso once again allowed to open up the exterior west wall. Not popping it just yet. There's no Mute Jammers to prevent it though. Yeah, I think they just wanted to check to make sure that no one was going to run out on them or anything like that. But now they've opened up that garage wall. They're going to start coming open, uh, coming around to this east side. Love this play from Shin. So easy to spot out any feet while playing Glaz as it gets highlighted in yellow. Worked out for that him earlier. Vision. Not so far. Yeah, and here comes Typon on that Monty. We'll have to see whether or not uh, the Monty play gets destroyed as quickly as it did last time. Sarah being abused. His ADS has been wasted so far. And Array takes down K-Razor once again. The first to fall. Not having a good day so far on his solo pushes. Should give Airwolf a bit more freedom on this roam, potentially even to flank through the garage and put a thorn in the side of this Montane. However, yeah. that east wall has been opened up. Yeah, Taipon taking his time, not really feeling too... Uh... Oh. oh, wow. Through the vision there, you can see it. He doesn't quite get the tag. That's a oh. foot, you Sarah. You are playing with fire right now. He is in such a bad spot. You can see the bullets coming through. Oh. Afro takes out a ray while all this happens. And still, Ysera is praying for his life in the corner of Garage on that catwalk. Just stay alive. It's the only thing Ysera needs to but do. And Type on can't is cut going it. to get gassed. And Luna gets the kill credit for that. Shin now cannot quite peek oh. in, but that's ahead. Shin finds Ysera. Three versus three now. Fav Gaming have taken control of Garage. This is what happened in the past, even though our Aerolf held on to it so steadfastly. Finally, there was a point where Ysera was taken out. Now Afro is just doing what he does, going crazy, taking down Luna Metal. Three players left for Fav, and still two smokes left. This has got to be Fav Gaming's rounds. As Glaz pushes straight on through, can Here play aggressively, Shin. pushing through. Can he spot out the player? Hysterics is down, all up to Mental. That's one kill. One versus two now. Can he deny the plant? Nope. No, Odin Miso steps up to the challenge. They certainly can, and Fav Gaming in the half with a 4-1 advantage. Not quite. It's uh, six rounds to a half. Six rounds, sorry. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> My bad. Almost there. Not Old quite. Old habits die hard. Yes. Old habits die hard. So, oh, man, it's it's such a hard road for Airwolf now. The only side they're having any kind of luck on whatsoever is Church. They really can't hold cash. And it was their primary bomb side. I, I think it really shows it's not the fact that Airwolf are struggling. It's the fact that Fav have such a dominant strategy.
for taking that bomb site. They certainly do, but like, it feels like the okay. So the downstairs defender, right in that cash hole. Yeah, yeah. Array playing the Jaeger has not done his job properly. I mean, he's right. He has been destroyed by Afro time and time again on everything. If he had killed Afro. All it's these rounds would have been right. entirely different, Because he has been taking out the initial player on the entry frag. He took out K-Razor. And in fact, the previous round, Array did a run out from Strip and took out K-Razor. So two rounds in a row, he's managed to get one pick. But the thing is, like, K-Razor hasn't needed to do anything should he in almost any of these rounds but, because of Afro. Yeah, but like, so, okay. So should then Array be falling back after he gets K-Razor, right? So you pick up the initial kill, all right? You stop that Zofia. You then back up and say, I have been losing this every single time from this point onwards. I need to go back and do something different. The only issue is from a strategic point of view, Arrowwolf, when they have players remaining, but they're all stuck inside of Cash Room when Fav Gaming controls CCTV, those players inside but he, of Cash can't, can't have stairs. any effect. He could sit on the stairs. Yeah, but I mean, there's not much that you can drop do from someone that back, stairs drop position. Someone back to, okay, drop someone from Cash back to Con. Someone holds Cash. The Con player jumps out the window and applies a pressure through the window, right, as they're trying to enter you have someone in cash and you have someone sitting on stairs i think that three-man hold could absolutely have put an end to fab gaming's push well something needs to give if arrow want to rhythm any more cash but it's not going to happen in this particular match oh maybe later in the uh, if we get to overtime but as for this half this is the final round of it, and it's going to be a downstairs defense with a heavy roam presence from Airwolf, just as worked out for them previously. Oh. Airay looking to peek, and he takes down Afro. That's the primary fragger for Fav off the Afro, board. just not with the reaction times. He did get one shot off, landed into the shoulder of Array, so Array has taken a bit of damage, but not too much. Taipon trying to clear out this top floor. Not feeling too comfortable to move forward. Drones. He's going to drone himself out. Why face check it when you can robotic check it? Yeah, well, spots out your Sarah doesn't necessarily know that Luna is nearby. Does see those alibi devices, the prisoners. And all three hide breaches now this time in Fab Gaming lineup. There's something we haven't touched on just yet. We have the Habana for the first time. Now, we're also seeing a retreat back to the bomb site for Yastera. Still Array and Luna playing aggressive, as I say that. Array defaults downstairs. Looks like Luna's just going to try and sneak his way here. Hope that he doesn't get droned out. And even if he does, he can drop into pool room. I like this strategy. And it looks like he is going to get face checked by the Montaigne. He, this isn't going to work out for him. Yeah, no, this is going to work out for him. And there he is. There's a oh Martin. Oh, my no, God! But the knife! Luna puts an end to type on. I don't believe that just happened. Odin Miso, though, going to take out a ray on the stairs. And that 556 five, comes up massive. Odin Miso has been a monster on this Thermite. Arrowwolf now. They have to play passively. They still have one man on the flank. Odin Miso struggling as he attempts to reload the 5-5. Five, five. The lesion mine stuck in his foot. Luna could make the difference on this Ooh, round if he just flanks at the right time. Another gas babe for the kill. Hysterix oh. picks up that one. Shin, though, getting shot from all different angles, but he still has that lesion mine. He holds the angle, but it's not coming in. K Razor picks up one for himself. He drops Mentalist. K Razor picks himself up a second, and Shin oh gets one for the kill count. But that goo mine's still going off. He's taken so much health off of Shin. But Luna still has the kit. He drops straight down. Why? He doesn't realize. And no. A thrown away oh. round for Arrowwolf in a position that really should have gone their way with still one roamer alive and the man advantage. But somehow the players from Fav Gaming just forced themselves into fight uh, into sight and take gunfight by gunfight. Yeah, they didn't need to push. He didn't need to push that. He didn't need to drop. Maybe they weren't aware of where the kit was at the time. But however, that's what you get when you don't have intel. Only time will tell whether this is an incredibly attacker-sided map, but honestly, based on the bans, I, I I don't think so. And historically, Clubhouse has actually been a defender-sided map since the rework. So, I I'm actually really worried for Arrowwolf right now. This is their this is their map pick, and this is where they're struggling to actually make an impact with that much time, with six rounds on the board and only one on the Arrowwolf side. Yeah, I really don't think this has played out how Arrowwolf expected it to. 5-1 at the half, especially, as you said, traditionally a defender-sided map, and you only pull out one victory on your defense. I, I just can't... 
I can't see Arrow. Or f they must be really struggling right now. Yeah, you know what's really ringing with me is the fact when I was talking to Shin, I, the thing I was most worried about for uh, Team Fav, Fav Gaming is the fact that these guys, for the most of them, you know that, yeah, they've got Shin, big hitter. Yeah, they've got Odin Miso, he's been around. But the rest of the roster, much newer and not necessarily as much LAN experience at these high-level events. So that's what I was worried about. And yet, Afro is proving me wrong. Yeah, the jit is coming through from the But yeah, Afro has come up so massive for Fav, uh, for Fav Gaming. So um, pushing their way through. So I, I just, I think that, you know, Shin's experience has really calmed these newbies, I think, and it's allowed them to really step up and do their thing. But on the other side, the newbie of Mentalist for Afro, uh, for uh, Arrowwolf hasn't done that much. That's it. Okay, you, you can't put too much stake in the scoreboard. Mentalist is playing a supportive role. He's That's what I asked him. He says, I play support on the team. He does a lot of calling. You know, Lunar Metal may be the primary IGL in terms of calling strats, but he plays very aggressively throughout the rounds themselves. So Mentalist is calling things like where the drones are, who's pushing where, that kind of thing. So for that reason, you can't necessarily put too much stake in the frag count for Mentalist. I, it's difficult to actually see how much of, a, of an impact he's having round per round. But, yeah. It, there's a lot of talk around, though, about, about Mentalist being a really strong player, being a really incredible player. You know, that he, he really steps up and makes those moments count, but we haven't seen him do that yet here. And I think that that needs to be something in Arrowwolf, and especially on Mentalist, he needs to sort of... Need to he needs to start having that impact that everyone expected him to have at this land event. For the first round of defense, Fav Gaming are going to head to the only bomb site that Arrowwolf won in their half. That's the basement. Bring a bandit, not something we've seen so far. Airwolf really likes the mute, but not the bandit at all. Yeah, definitely. And we are seeing that Monty come out, Luna Metal on that Monty. This is, is Monty's LAN, I'm telling you. The OG Monty <laughs> player himself, Luna Metal. So, you know, he'll be bringing that out, but... I, I feel like if, if you could say that anyone is going to win this LAN yeah, event, I can say for 100% certainty that Montaigne... <laughs> The Montaigne pick rate has won this land event already. And I feel like it's just going to happen for the rest well, of the time. It's been 100% pick rate so far, hasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Not, not something you see every day for, um, you know, such a specialized operator. Yeah, and well, that is true, isn't it? Um, I wonder if anyone else has 100% pick rate. Maverick, Thermite? Yeah, I believe Maverick and, and Thermite. Perhaps even the smoke. Sometimes I don't keep full track of this, but it's nice to see that both the Mute and Bandit used in conjunction. You know, we've got quite a, a an array of ha Hard Breach Denier now in the game. Obviously, Kaid being the most recent Defender Operator added. Not quite yet allowed in these leagues yet. He's uh, well, in actually, an evaluation period, but still you can see the, the Bandit and the Mute so high valued. Yeah, well, that's something we haven't touched at all yet is the three, uh, the, the three auto bands and operators, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. But as you know, we are in a round, and we're seeing quite an aggressive defense here out of Fave. Yeah, three roamers so far. K Razor, the top of the blue stairs, and two players up near the cash room as Airwolf encircle this area. Look at all the reinforcements being like, placed. This is a basement defense, hey? Yeah. Like, and, this is, the bombs are in the basement, and here we are, a full minute into the round. And we're only entering into the top floor now. But this is what is allowed to happen now in on this map. The real question is, upon these entries, who's going to find the frags? Because heading into the later moments of the round, it, it really is going to be telling of who has right the man there. advantage, of who was going to win those final bomb sites, uh, bomb pushes. Yeah, there's a C4 right above that door. So if uh, that Thermite walks in, Luna's going to get an explosion oh, no! in the back. But Shin right there gets himself a double as he puts... Oh, as he puts Lunar and Mentalist, Afro adds one to the tally as well. And just like that, we're in a two versus five. Make it a one versus five. You're Sarah, you have a hard road ahead of you. But that's the end of that. Finished before it even starts. I'm so impressed by Fav at the moment. Just looking at the way that they play this, the idea there is, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to reinforce the exterior walls of CCTV. We're going to play in cash and near the top of main stairs with some rotations and some stuff to play with like C4s and goo mines. That's our main area that we want them to come to us and we're going to hold fast. But on top of that, we also have a player playing around blue stairs, playing around lounge. He's not meant to get aggressive. He's just holding an escape route for us. And on top of that, preventing a flank. And Airwolf, they think, all right, there are two players up here. You don't solidly necessarily drone out all of that. 
the area surrounding that the bandit player and that really punishes them i'm just seeing some really sophisticated uh, operator and player placements from fav gaming what we need to see from airwolf to counter that is a strong intel and then good reads based on that intel so that they know where they can dedicate their push that doesn't conf uh, that doesn't directly challenge the fav placement have to really Attackers need to locate and defuse bomb. fav have been impressive so far and Aerowolf traditionally have been the gatekeepers of I, I, APAC. Right? I promise whoever, that. Whoever beats Aerowolf wins the land. Look, you're not wrong so far. It happened at the most recent APAC land Pro League finals when Nora Rengo beat. Yep, it's happened at every beat, land. Yep, happened at every every land. single land. Nora Rengo beat Aerowolf at season eight. Mantis beat Aerowolf at the Paris qualifier. Fnatic beat Aerowolf at the Invitational Qualifier and, for that matter, at Season 7, seven. Finals. And then Irons beat them. Yeah, and Irons beat them in Season 6. And this is that that rematch seen again. And it's not looking the same as it weird last time. Last time we saw this match, the Irons versus Cryptic match, it was so close, neck and neck the whole way through. But here, we're staring down match points on Airwolf's map, and they only have one round. Yeah, that is Airwolf's map pick. That's something we haven't touched on here. And Fav have just destroyed them on it. They've dismantled them. They've sent them to the four corners of the globe in just pieces right now. And Eruv really need to collect those pieces up and they need to start cobbling together some form of a defense or, well, technically an offense here at this point, but they, they really need to start cobbling together something. One kill finally does go the way of Aerowolf with Ysera picking up the first kill. Mavericks have been working out so far for both of these teams. You can see the castle being enabled to hold to uh, let Afro hold downstairs in lounge, but you know there's a lot of ways you can counter this, especially since Airwolf six picked onto the sledge specifically to counter that. Ooh. Good placement from Afro, almost finding the kill onto Hysterics. Oh. What's that? Oh my God! Another Afro, one, Afro! You God, Afro! He is being pushed from three different directions, but he doesn't care. Make that a fourth as Monty pushes in through the garage, and Afro does not care at all. He takes two frags and runs back home without taking a lick of damage. This is really scary for Aerowolf at the moment. Still, they have found one kill in the midst of it, but no progress made on this garage. As Luna Metal's still stumped as to how he's going to push in. K Razor filthy angle. holding it. Filthy angle, as you said. Sin as Mentalist peaks this, I think he's going to find a face full of lead. But here comes Luna. And the impact goes off. We'll the take about 12 health off him. Well, 10 health. Not doing so much so far. Really, this exterior east wall needs to be opened up by the Thermite to put some pressure on K Razor. Luna Metal can't do what? much, but he finds one anyway. Taking one down. Stuck to a rock in a hard place as the smokes go off. Worried about this flank from Afro, but Hysterics is starting to bring this back together by supporting from the window and Mentalist himself from the east side. Yeah, Aerowolf starting to cobble together something here as they have managed to get into a three versus five. The smoke comes out. I think I heard some C4 get ripped. It finally goes off. The impact goes off. Lunar Metal still sitting on about a third health though. Mentalist is going to take out Odin Miso. Typon trades one back himself. That leaves us in a two versus two. The health advantage with Fav as Hysterix is going to drop Typon. Oh! And then Mentalist gets their hip fire onto Afro and Arrow will come out with their second round. Looks like this is going to be fairly Attack aside, potentially no one having luck on cash so far. Good thing for Aerowolf is they've got a long half ahead to claw Afro. us into overtime. Afro. No, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I mean, no one. He I, needs to change his name to Godfro. 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 I mean, I haven't seen Afro play much before, other than, of course, other of the online Fav games. But, you know, he's not played in any LAN events for the APAC LAN. Um, you know, sometimes there are Japanese regional events. Japanese is a behemoth of a region. So much fan support in Japan, and um, I'm sure they're all watching on the Japanese streams. So, well, you yeah, know. it's definitely, it's a, it's a region that has grown, right? It started out very small. Like, ANZ was the, ANZ and SEA were the two behemoth regions at the beginning. Japan started out really small, but Japan has become this massive titan of the APAC region. So it's interesting to see these these traditionally lower tier teams that we just never really saw at any international events, all of a sudden nipping at the heels of the top tier teams. Now we're seeing them start to come through. Fav could be the first one to really get their comeback here.
And at the top of it all is Afro playing Castle and Maverick so far with an impressive 11 and 4 scoreline for his KD. Airwolf still bringing that Montaigne as well as the Maverick, in fact, whipping out Glaz this time. We've seen a bit of jumping around on the operators for Airwolf, and even though they know that they could potentially be attacking the same bomb site, they do make some changes. Perhaps even taking a leaf out of uh, Fav's book. Hysterics has gone for Buck instead of Sledge, so struggle a bit more with the Castle Barricades, but Array well, playing... At the end of the day, I don't think those Castle Barricades really stopped much. I don't think that Sledge <laughs> really had much of an impact on the castles themselves. The right? Maverick like, certainly didn't do anything for the castles, <laughs> did it? Yeah, you know, the Maverick just died. But, like, it, it comes to it comes to a point where I think the, the Buck is going to be more useful because of the vertical play. So I think that come... Come the uh, oh. actual input is... He's trying to get the camera there. Yep, okay. Does take the camera out and we'll go around. Shin's dropped and he will make his way back up the blue stairs. But I think it... I think that buck is just going to have overall more usefulness than what a sledge could bring. Laz trying to do what Shin was doing previously, but Array struggling so far. That is a pixel and a half to attempt to shoot. Okay, Razor yep. still safe and snug with full HP. Lucky he can pick that up. And they're going to look for these lesion mines on the floor, but those lesion mines actually behind the barricade, so they have to walk straight through them. They can't be shot. K-Razor has a lot of work. That's a whiffed gas grenade going off as well. K-Razor has got to be so careful right now. He is not in a strong spot. And something is spawning out that mountain, I believe, with the bulletproof camera, probably from the castle. Array takes a huge amount of damage, but deals a bit to K-Razor in return. But K-Razor getting very aggressive. Lunar Metal is just calling out everything to his team. Error almost finds it, but you can see the lack of confidence he has in this gunfight, just trying to expose himself for the least amount of time possible because K-Razor has the fire rate advantage. And he knows it too. Look at how aggressively the Legion is peaking. I think he needs, they need to time this so Monty's gonna drop his shield, right? So oh, Monty no. now has to drop his shield at some point, yeah, but here comes the crossfire. Up. Monty drops his shield, he manages to pick him up, Lunar Metal with that headshot with the pistol, but at the same time, he might get downed. It's probably actually a good idea for him to get downed because he will get reset. He won't die to the Goo Mines but he will end up getting reset. Yep, there we go. There's a for him. I think that the idea... Oh, maybe I don't that was think deliberate. he did that intentionally, but... You wouldn't want to be in that position, would you? No. I think he probably should have let the goon mines down him at the top. Shin potentially looking to get aggressive, making a rotation in he, through the stock he room. He could catch Arrowwolf with their pants down right here if he gets aggressive enough. He on, needs to go for it. No Lunar Metal gets put up. On top of it all, Shin still has his C4. I expect you saw him brandishing it at the start of the round, but Ysera is going to drone out Lounge, which could potentially be Shin's bane. The wall of Lounge to Garage being opened by Hysterics, who's dedicated to holding this flank, but can he do the job needed? Mental needs to get inside and plant this diffuser. But so far, it's just a frag fest as kills go both ways. Afro gonna run in behind. He could make all the difference to his team. He but just the, needs to stop the, the chase. Plant. No, there we go. Attackers take it out as they do get the frags. Arrow just comes out on top oh by the skin of their teeth there. I really... All Fav had to do was stop the plant. I don't think they really had to get as aggressive as what they did. Uh, but, however, it is what it is, and Arrow Wolf has come out on top. I call that an Irons round, because that's what <laughs> we saw when Irons were playing against Cryptic. The, the very far last round of the last map in that matchup was 15 seconds to go, five versus five on Cafe. The attackers decide to use their Ying Candelas and repel into the bomb site, and they kill everyone in 15 seconds. And that's pretty much the kind of chaos that we saw at the end of that round there. Not taking a Maverick this time. So they're presuming that Fab are going back into the basement. The Glass seems to be working out for Airwolf so far. Even though Array had limited success, you can see how they really are switching around yeah. operators just very nearly. Very versatile. Very versatile of the Aerial lineup Attackers right now. But it comes to Maverick. He's 100% pick ban. Uh, he's 100% pick, sorry. Does end up failing. But Thermite and Monty still continue their 100% pick rate. Uh, potentially Smoke as well. And I'm pretty sure we've seen Valkyrie every single round as well. I don't think that last round we had a Valk. Yeah, but we did. Wait, did we? All right. 
I expect we'll see probably quite a heavy roam again. It's been working out on the most part for both of these teams. Airwolf only just lost that round that where they uh, they were roaming, and it was really the anchors that um, that unfortunately lost it in the end. They they just uh, fav gaming pushed in and, and did the damage Attackers onto the anchors. Yeah, and. You know, we're coming back here, so 6-3. Aerowolf is slowly clawing, uh, clawing a, you know, the, the rounds back here. But unfortunately, they've got no room to move. Fav gets one round, it's over. Right, like, it's, it's, it's over at that point. So this, we haven't seen, like, Church was a really strong hold for them last time. Whether or not Aero can actually break that open or whether or not Fav will take it will be the decider of this map. Has to be a reverse sweep from Aerowolf to keep their dream alive on Clubhouse, which is... Of course, as I mentioned before, their map pick, something you'd expect that they'd have the upper hand on. So next up, we're heading to Oregon, Fav's map pick, and then definitely a map that I think would favor Fav Gaming. So far, the roam clear is working out pretty well. Spotted out Shin and Afro as well. Lots of And oh. to help out, then this is surely going to be the end for him. Monty just needs to sit in that corner at this point. And he just needs to wait. He just needs to wait for people to come save him right now. Shin very cautious, though. You know, he he knows that there's potentially someone watching his flank. So Afro and Shin decide to regroup inside of the logistic office and just make Airwolf keep doing the work. Yep, he's going to drop down the hatch, get himself to safety, and they may head back up to try and deal with it once they have a few more people with them. But they need to be very, very careful of these uh, fab gamers up on the top floor. Hysterics made his way down the main stairwell. Thermite starting to pop these hatches. And oh, wow, drop into blue. Luna, can he do the damage? We've seen him always on the melee kills with Montaigne. Luna making it work again. And look, not even dealing with the Romas, perhaps just waiting to receive them by pushing into the bomb site. That seems to be the go for Airwolf. Can it work again? Luna Metal, another kill with Montaigne. The plant going down inside of B, inside of the Arsenal room. But this flank oh. from above Shin doing so much damage. Two big kills. Two players left for Airwolf, and they are stuck downstairs. Yes, they are, and they are just getting pinged. You can hear it. It's just going off. Afro, he's got some work to play with. Taipon sitting in the church. He's got some room to play with as well. They just need to hold their angles at this point, but now the plant is going down. Luna going to try and get it done. Can he do it? It'll be up to Shin from above to stop it if he can. Makes the plant instead at the back. Vertical holes from Shin could deny this plant, but perhaps he doesn't have any impacts remaining. He does have holes above, but Luna finds the kill onto Shin, the one that was needed. It's now a one versus two for the captain of Airwolf. He no way he can find these kills. Yeah. It has to be frags. Planting the diffuser, but no time. He He's is. gonna be exposed for so much of it. Yep. Walking straight into Taipon. And, and that's that GG. The first map of Fav Gaming versus Airwolf goes the way of the Japanese. Yeah, Fav Gaming, very, very strong hold there. Very strong map pick. So 7-3, Arrow. They lose their own map pick. It's very, very unfortunate. But Fav, so strong and so dominant. Look at that. 10 and 13 for Shin and Afro, respectively. Mentalist at the top of the scoreboard. Maybe not the frags, but I mean, I, I think, like I said, Mentalist, he plays a supportive character and operator and, and play style. I think that, you know, you can't, put too much rag on mentalist. The real thing here is how impressed I am with Shin and the